Hey, hi everyone. Hi and welcome to the election panel. It will focus on sustainability, environmental issues and coming from perspective of ESPO because it's in collaboration with Aldo University and in students of the International School of ESPO. So it's this uh, great opportunity to have have young people asking political candidates about their questions on different subjects. And we, we're going to proceed like as follows. So first of all, uh, we're going to go through uh, a little exercise of how would you rank uh, the sustainable development goals. So each candidate has a chance to place the SDGs, there's 17 of them, in order of preference and assign uh, points to each one uh, so that we get an idea of, at the very start of how what kind of different priorities different people and different parties have in these uh, city elections. And uh, after that, we're going to have a 10 minute kind of quick round of questions when you can ask kind of yes or no questions. Uh, the idea is that you have sort of um, are you in favor of nuclear energy? And then candidate can say just yes or no with thumbs up, which again helps us get an idea of what the differences are, what kind of thoughts people have. And after that, we'll have a small break. And then we will go into more deeper questions where everyone will have one after another a chance to explain their position and what they think on whatever comes to your mind. And I think it's important to remember that in uh, city elections, in this uh, city council elections, uh, some super important things are decided about how your day-to-day -day life will run. So of all the elections, city elections can really be felt on your everyday life. It's about your library. It's about your school network. It's about what kind of services you have. And it's about what kind of taxes you or your parents are paying. So it's very concrete. And I think in that way, it's a very important election in which we should get active. And uh, I myself, my name is Jana Tietjevska. I work at the European Parliament, uh, at the European Parliament's Research Service, to be precise, on international trade. I've been working in Brussels for the EU for eight years. And since one year, I've been back in Finland, and I'm also following a master's in Aalto University in sustainability. And I'm also a former international baccalaureate student, IB student myself. So I know how tough those years are <laughs> for those of you who have still it in front of them. So yeah, um, now let's jump into introdu introductions of each panelist. So we have from the Finns party, Arvin Adrian. Uh, we have from the Green League, Oscar Smith. We have from the Swedish People's Party, Linda Sederholm. From Christian Democrats, Jukka Wasokainen. Uh, from the National Coalition Party, Katarina Komulainen. And from Social Democratic Party, Iqbal Hossein. So now we will go sort of uh, one and a half minutes per, per candidate that you can introduce yourself, talk a bit about who you are. And at the end, I would like to ask you to name one example of what the city council, what the ESPO city council has done well, in your opinion, in the past. So we have an idea of what kind of things you would also be interested in prioritizing if you would be elected to the council. So I'm going to go in order of appearance. I'm going to invite Arvin from the Perusuomalaiset Defense Party to begin. Go ahead, Arvin. Hello everyone, my name is Arvin Adrian and I have the honor to be a candidate for the Finns party in the Espo City Council election. I'm also an author and a cultural activist for supporting women and children rights in Iran, where people are under oppression of an Islamic government. As one of my written book is about corporate social responsibility available on Amazon, I am glad to participate in this election panel about sustainable responsible, sustainable development. About city council election, it's election to vote for. There are people who decide how many parks, benches there should be, where the next playground should be established, and how many high rises there will be built. 
This election focuses on your local community much more than presidential or parliamentary election. I think an example of a good Expose City Council activity was agreeing on the new zone planning for middle and northern SO, at least at some point of it. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much. So there was um, really nice examples of what Espo City Council does and what matters to you. So I think that was a really nice introduction. Uh, we're going to jump into Oscar Smith now, who is representing the Green Party. So go ahead, Oscar. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Oscar and I'm 18 years old and I'm a second year uh, student at Etelä-Tapilan Lukio or ETIS. Uh, I've lived in Espo since 2011, uh, where I live. Uh, I moved moved here from uh, England. Uh, you might re recognize from my accent. And um, I also uh, was told that there are some EIS students uh, present. Uh, so I'd like to say, say a massive Shout out to all you hardworking EIS students and uh, EIS is a great st school and I hope you choose to study there. And um, yeah, and, and shout out to Lila as well, if, if you can hear me. Um, I've wor uh, worked on the SY Youth Council um, since 2018. Um, and that's, that's basically where I um, learned about sustainable development. And, and um, so I was elected for the Board of Sustainable Development in ESPO as the Youth Council representative. And then I was also continued my work as the um, Youth Council chairperson for the Sustainable Development Work Group. Uh, in terms of um, activities the ESPO Youth Council has engaged in in the past four, uh, four years, I mean, sorry, the ESPO Council has engaged in in four years, um, is one thing I'd like to mention is um, free contraception for young people. Uh, it's personally been a very important topic for myself and the city has just decided last year to extend that to contraception pills uh, and this is a great work towards uh, a more equal um, and a more respective um, contraception system so this is one thing I mentioned but definitely it's very important to vote and uh, it's really nice to see everyone and um, yeah thank you thanks and that was a super nice introduction and also the fact that I think you're the second youngest candidate for ESPO City Council elections. So applause for stepping up for the next generation. It's really great. Um, the next uh, would be uh, Linda Sederholm from the Swedish People's Party. Uh, Linda, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Linda, and uh, I'm studying for a, a doctoral um, degree in School of Chemistry in Aalto University. Uh, I've uh, grown up in ESPO. My Home uh, language is Swedish, so that's that's why I chose also RKP uh, SFP. And uh, I have been active in politics now for just a year. It's my first election uh, in the Swedish Youth of Finland, the party's uh, youth organization. I am now leading the Committee for Environmental Policy this year. Um, that's why, why, why I became active in politics is because uh, I think we need more uh, representatives with technical and scientific knowledge to make those important decisions about energy and building and technical planning. There's a lot of science involved when making sustainable decisions and building the future. Uh, and one good example of something that uh, the city council has been involved in is uh, public transportation. And especially these Aleppo bikes, the city bikes that we got to Espo, I think, two years ago now. Uh, those are a great step forward for better public transportation. Thank you. Great, thanks for the introduction. Uh, I will go now over to uh, Jukka Wasukainen, who is coming from the Christian Democrats, so Christianist Democrats. I have a timer here, sorry for each one. Hello. Hello everyone, I'm yeah, Jukka Asukainen and I'm surely the oldest man, man in this panel, I think. Uh, I'm Barefoot Espo starting from 57 already and I went my schools here and, and to my universities early, earlier Aalto and, and, and actually I was one of the launching the um, Espo Green Movement uh, after Koyjärvi fights which we called uh, that on, on early 80s. And I have served already in the local politics in Espo as a, with the Green Party for, for a lot of time um, in 80s and 90s and 20s. But uh, 
Um, I also uh, have served a lot of in the international affairs. Um, I, I, I moved to Africa, I lived there, and I have been negotiating climate, ne climate uh, um, agreement as well as uh, Rio process sustainable development process and other environment uh, matters for 30 years. Uh, I also led a UN uh, climate technology center for five years, which was based in Copenhagen and serving 100 developing countries on the climate technology uh, matters and issues. Uh, lately, I have been serving uh, Prime Minister's office as a, as a chief uh, specialist on, on carbon neutral Finland. And, um, and there I have been introducing myself also to our sustainable development committee work. I, I leave it here. Thank you. Thanks, Jukka. Super happy to have you with such extensive experience, especially because we want to discuss specifically those issues that you have expertise on. Uh, now, Katarina Komulainen from National Coalition Party, so Kokomus, right? So go ahead. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Katarina and I'm 23 years old. And first of all, thank you for inviting me this to this panel discussion today. And yeah, I was actually 15 years old when I moved to Espo. And quite interestingly, I went to Etela Tapiola Lukio to do my IV. So quite interesting. Uh, and then, yeah, um, I barely made it. That's a very interesting note on that. But from there, I've uh, I've come very far. I'm a startup entrepreneur myself. I'm already kind of for university degree. So I guess that's uh, quite far. <laughs> um, yeah, I think um, to keep it short, very interesting initiative that was taken by the Espo Municipal Council. It's an initiative. Uh, it was exactly a month ago that how we are able to engage the youth in the decision making that actually concerns them, such as like how our school is going to look like, what activities, like what you can do in addition that going to school or what hobbies are in Espo. So yeah, that's about it. <laughs> nice. So kind of after school activity um, initiative. Yeah. And now... Uh, we still have Social Democrat Representative Iqbal Hossain. Um, go ahead. Hi, everyone. My name is Iqbal Hossain, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm running as a uh, candidate from SDP. I'm an IT professional, and also I study at Alta University. I'm doing my master's degree. Um, I actually moved in Espoin back in 2011 while I was a student at Metropolia. And uh, I got myself involved with METCA, which is Metropolitan Student Union, and then uh, Erasmus International, Erasmus Finland International. And um, I have always uh, uh, kept myself uh, mostly with the international environments. And uh, while I moved, uh, while I, when I started my study at Alto University, I also joined the Student Guild and uh, got uh, myself quite. Uh, involved with uh, students. And then uh, as a part-time job, I started to work for uh, Delhi Finland. And that is where I actually got my uh, proper orientation with the Finnish politics. And uh, so, yeah, that is how I really got interested in the Finnish politics. And uh, one, uh, to keep it really short, uh, this, uh, there was an initiative in the beginning of this year uh, by Espo City. Uh, they had uh, something like a competence center for highly educated immigrants. Uh, so uh, I really like the idea. It's a pilot project yet, but it's uh, because I have seen lots of uh, immigrant people who are like really highly educated, but they do not know where to start from. I haven't gone through with this uh, project, of course not, but uh, I kind of like their idea and I hope it, it goes well. Thanks. Thanks for that's a super interesting example. Good one. Yeah. Uh, so from that, it's going to be now a jump into the the Flinga board. So basically, what we thought that we would do next as a kind of warm up after the introductions is to see uh, how different people are or different parties representatives are ranking the sustainable development goals. Uh, so Fon will now share her screen, and we will see. Uh, already slightly prepared, but you can still assign some of the points now in, in the live game. 
Um, okay, everyone has already assigned it, so it's really great. So the idea here is then we will zoom in to each candidate's um, quadrant of the of this map, and we will see kind of what is people's first choice for the priority, which uh, ones have gotten the most bubbles. Uh, each bubble represents either uh, resources in terms of time or money. You can think of it as a as a. 10,000 euros, like one bubble, or as 10,000 working hours, which kind of reflects the really tricky decisions that in ESPOSI councils, the representatives would have to take when making different decisions on the budget or where to allocate money and time. So let's maybe now jump into Iqbal. Uh, so can you zoom in a little bit fun for this, um, for the screen? So we can see a little bit closer. I think it's SDG number eight that Iqbal has prioritized uh, the most. Really the top top line shows kind of what you care about. So now I'm gonna hand over to you to um, just quickly run us through in one minute or so, uh, why uh, decent work and economic growth and gender equality and education um, matter to you the most. And also why, for example, life on land and life below water is uh, a less of a priority. So kind of both, both ends of the spectrum would be super interesting to hear about. So Iqbal, go ahead. Thank you once again. Um, well, uh, uh, while I was prioritizing these uh, uh, bubbles, uh, I thought who, what is important for Finland, for what, is, what is important for us here. So decent work and economic growth is something uh, uh, I think uh, uh, there are uh, at least uh, recent, in, in recent days there are lots of people are suffering uh, getting decent work here. Um, I think it's probably because of uh, we do not have uh, enough um, uh, good direction how to do it or a good guideline especially the immigrant people, this is what I, fe I felt. And with decent work, um, I think economic, e economic growth is also somehow related with this one. Gender equality is something we cannot, uh, um, I think Finland is the, one of the very good example of having gender equality, but I still wanted to invest in this um, matter because uh, I, I, I think uh, Finland, where Finland it is today, it, uh, the one of the big reasons is that it has a good gender equality. Quality education, once again, I mean, it's a continuous process. It's it's doing good, I know, but uh, it's still um, we. I still wanted to invest in it because it's a continuous project uh, process. It's a learning process, and uh, uh, life under the sea. Uh, life in the sea. Uh, uh, can you zoom out, please? Sorry, I cannot see what the... Uh, at the bottom it was. I think life yeah, on yeah, yeah, yeah. the sea yeah, and um, life on land. Uh, well. Uh, I think in Finland we are doing it pretty good, and at this moment, I um, uh, like it, it's of course it is very important, uh, but uh, I do not think of like investing in this uh, at this moment because uh, in Finland we are doing it pretty good, both in life below water and life on the land. It's it's, it's doing pretty good compared to other regions of the world. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. No, it was it was kind of clear, good, good reasoning. Um, then, also, um, of course, it doesn't mean that we don't care about all of the goals. It was just an exercise to prioritize and also just see if you have just your favorite topics that you want to prioritize in the council. Um, next, maybe we jump to Yuka, uh, right underneath Iqbal. You can just go down a little bit so it's a little bit different and i think this is the fun part of this that sustainable cities and communities and also responsible consumption and production uh, are at the top uh, for yuka along with uh, actually with the money coins climate action and education and health and well-being so do you want to talk through uh, your thoughts? Yeah, there? yeah. First of all, it is very difficult to to prioritize sustainable development goals that they were never meant to be prioritized. So in that sense, you put a, a very difficult the, the quest to us uh, at all. Um, now, I, I started to look at it more about from the international, from the global point of view, that where Finland is actually among the best countries already 
that where we at least relatively have let's say managed and and and, and be excellence uh, and that therefore i didn't put so much on equity or or poverty or or uh, even even some of the nature issues there that's why indeed how espo will be sustainable city how how we in uh, how responsible we are in our consumption and production they come up from the international kind of uh, demand that where finland and, and espo needs to to kind of show responsibilities and share burden sharing uh, in in that sense and therefore i i kind of place those in priorities um, uh, and of course the decent work is is the basic of doing anything politically meaning is that that we have the, the, the work and economic growth now i put the money somewhere else indeed that where we have to put our resources in espo and that is exactly we have to look that our education system is responding to the transformation uh, of the sustainable development uh, in in espo and therefore um, uh, uh, the education comes really almost first there where the money is put. Uh, the same is maybe good health, as we know, uh, and so on. So that, that, in that way, I, I look at it. Of course, uh, when you consider it um, uh, more thoroughly, you might might get in, the, in another order. Yes. But this is how, how I feel uh, at the moment. Uh, okay. Let me say also that that even I'm climate a specialist, I didn't put climate first in that sense, that I see that we are on very firmly on the way for carbon neutrality. And therefore, I think that that's uh, politically at least partly already solved. Finland will be an, uh, one of the best countries in the political means on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The interpretation was actually a bit like Iqbal's that in terms of what uh, what is already going well, uh, you have prioritized slightly less than what really needs to be in the focus. Uh, now let's jump to Arvin. Um, you have started with responsible consumption and production, as well as peace and justice institutions, and allocated kind of your imaginary resources also just to the top uh, top half of SDGs. Um, but for example, no poverty and uh, sustainable cities and communities is in contrast featuring at the very end. So talk us through your thoughts here, Arvind, please. Sure. I start with responsible consumption and production. China lacks environmental responsibility and human rights. So we must avoid importing products made by China and such countries. We must localize our production lines in Finland. This is more environmental friendly and brings job, more job to people. Next are peace, justice, gender equality, and equality. Governments that lack these factors must either accept them or receive economic sanctions. It has been 42 years that an Islamic government in Iran is killing people instead of the country because people do not agree that their national will use to fight with Israel. So doing any business deal with Islamic regime in Iran will only kill innocent people. However, economic sanctions are the key to force those authorities towards SDG. Next are education, partnership, and innovation. This should be done by free and developed world to speed up the changes in corrupt countries. This must be done through advising and leading and should not be given for free. The corrupt governments must pay to receive it. All the other SDGs will be logically resulted of the implementation of the previous mentioned goals by the time. Thank you. Thank you. This kind of conversation is getting so deep philosophical uh, because we're going to the very basis of what forms good institution building, what sets states on the right kind of path of development. Uh, so thanks a lot, Arvin. Uh, now uh, it would be Linda on Linda for Swedish People's Party underneath. Uh, I saw earlier. Can you go back, Fun, please? Thank you. 
So uh, Linda has put uh, some strong priority in the top three with responsible consumption, climate action, and good health and well-being. And I wonder if you had also the similar logic or, or what were you thinking? I know that you care a lot about science and evidence. So uh, how did you come to this result, Linda? Yes, uh, could you zoom out a bit so we can see all the three rows at the same time? Thank you. Yeah, so I, I also found it really hard to, to choose this uh, prioritization, but I decided like to focus on what can we do in, in ESPO and within the city council. Uh, and by that logic started to check like what did we already achieve? Uh, and that is how I, I first put the, the ones with lowest priority. Uh, and then I decided, for me, it was very clear that the number 12 of, um, of, of uh, responsible consumption and production should be our priority. And this is something we on a local level can act uh, for, for example, in city planning, uh, deciding what type of, uh, of uh, and businesses we give space to. Do we give it to fast fashion, which is very big global pollution or do we give it for example to artisanal products and uh, secondhand shops or, or local cafes and so on uh, and then i also strongly prioritize uh, climate action uh, which i think is a bit connected to also several other goals uh, and sort of like an umbrella term for them for example these uh, uh, for example the sustainable cities and affordable clean energy and and uh, what else was it? Uh, number nine, the industry. I'm sorry. Uh, so, so that's why I, I want to make sure that we give enough uh, resources to keep developing uh, climate uh, uh, and sustainable uh, building and decisions because that work is never finished. Uh, and the third priority, good health. We have had problems with, for example, there's not enough resources for elder care and especially not for, for young people's mental health services. So there we definitely need to improve stuff. Um, so that's, that explains the top three. Um, and then the other ones that I, I want to raise also this quality education and gender equality, which I actually put a little bit close to each other because I feel that they are connected. Uh, if we make sure that Quality education covers every age, from daycare up to university. Uh, we will also help uh, gender equality by, by making sure that people can have their kids in daycare and, and continue their careers. Right now, it's mostly mothers who stay home. Um, so Finland is uh, very far on that respect, but we're not in the goal yet. Uh, and the quality education also connects to a lot of these other goals, uh, like understanding what is what is sustainable consumption and uh, and uh, so on so mm, thank you yeah that was a really good summary i think that um that it was again a little bit this logic of what is already very much there like we all have clean drinking water and so on so i really understand what the logic and uh, now katarina um last but not least uh talk us through quickly and then we jump into audience questions yes uh Thank you. Um, I think more or less how there are two categorization, the things I pay attention and things I don't pay attention. And I think things that I don't pay attention are things that come quite naturally once the priorities are done. So if we focus on sustainable cities and communities, quite, uh, quite naturally the climate action and for example, life below water comes after that. So that's, I think, first remark. Then, as you can see, there are like sustainable cities and communities. Uh, we know we are like people from different backgrounds. I'm myself from from half Finnish, half Kazakh family. So we need to take our uh, take care of our communities as well as uh, focus on sustainable options that we have, like organic food, local food, and that kind of thing is very, very crucial, I think, for the entrepreneurs as well. Then decent work and economic growth. I know for our listeners today, this might be a bit far, but it's also very important because you're going to spend one third of your life doing something 
it, it's a work or you're a business owner. So it's you need to have a meaningful job for your life. And then thirdly, I have industry, innovation, and infrastructure. So uh, you all are more or less at home currently. So having nice uh, apartments, having nice environment where we live is very important. Uh, then also innovation, I don't know, but that was a very interesting thing that Fatser did in Buasar earlier this week with the drone, uh, drone delivery. So we need those kind of cool stuff in Espo as well. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Um, and your slogan, I think, is community builder. So no wonder you put that one as your first. Uh, Oscar, Oscar Smith, please, also for the greens. It was underneath here. Um, you have chosen also sustainable cities and communities. It's a popular one. And uh, you also have the clean water at the end. So, uh, but maybe tell us more about how this uh, climate education prioritization came up. Yeah, I'll try and be quite short. Um, so definitely, I definitely understand all the, and uh, reinforce the the previous speakers when I say that all of the sustainable development goals, uh, in a way they overlap and complement each other in so many different ways. So this is a very difficult task to prioritize a few. Uh, as I said, uh, sustainable um, development in cities is extremely important that a lot of the decisions that are made uh, relating to for example climate action or gender equality it happens on a local level uh, as opposed to the um, um, international or national level um, so yeah sustainable uh, development in cities it, it can be funded in many different ways um, but i want to speak more about uh, why i chose education and climate action um, i believe that education is maybe the most important factor in sustainable development, um, as in the fact that most of these goals rely on quality education and a high level um, of understanding. Um, and one, one thing I've, I've been thinking about a lot recently is that when um, after the pandemic, when there are um, budget shortcomings and, and uh, a lack of resources, um, I feel like education should be one of the last things that we start saving from. And I hope this will be like this in ESPO as well. Uh, in terms of climate action, uh, the Green belie Greens believe that uh, the municipalities in Finland uh, have the number one responsibility for climate change in Finland, um, or sorry, uh, mitigating climate change. Um, so, for example, uh, public transport, uh, I mentioned earlier cycling, uh, these are all things that cities can do towards um, mitigating climate change. Uh, so these, these are the few things that I thought of. Uh, but yeah, I look forward to the discussion. Great, thank you. Uh, I don't know about you, but I think after this uh, like sustainable development goals exercise, I almost feel like uh, the different parties have more in common than one would have imagined uh, from the offset. I thought this was interesting to, to notice, but now is the time to find out more a, lot, a little bit more about the differences between uh, you guys. Hopefully we can find at least some. Of course, there are quite many, I'm sure. So uh, the idea is for the next five or 10 minutes, uh, this is really already for the audience. So uh, to start putting up questions which require a yes or no answer, so positive or negative. So I will give a few examples, and after that I will uh, start taking the floor. I think the best if you raise your hand with uh, the reaction function when you have a question in mind, and uh, I will give you the floor. You can ask the question, and then uh, the candidates will just give a thumbs up or a thumbs down so we can see what people think about things in a more quick way. So, for example, one question I would have about ESPO specifically is the current, the following statement. Um, parking should be free in ESPO. And the, you can ha now go three, two, one reactions for or against. Or a thumbs up. So we see we have mostly uh, down. Uh, Iqbal was in favor and uh, Yuka was against. I'm going to let uh, two people sort of give uh, their chance to say uh, why you chose yes or no. Um, Iqbal, do you want to say why you chose yes first? Well, uh, ESPO isn't uh, that uh, densely populated yet. And 
I think most of the places in Espo is free. And uh, to attract more people uh, to live in Espo, this is one thing I think we can, we can do it easily, which is probably not easy to do in Helsinki. So I'm in favor of that yet. Thanks. Okay. And Linda, why did you choose um, no, that parking should not be free? Uh, it was a good point by Iqbal that we have a, a, a lot of places also with less dense population. But uh, when we're talking about parking, we often talk about south of Espo, which is very, very urban uh, and has excellent uh, public transportation. Uh, of course, people can still have their car at home parked and they can go to their cottages. But for going uh, for the daily errands, we really should promote uh, using the public transportation and improving that. Okay, thank you. Does anyone already have their own question in mind? Mohammed or Isla or Ada or Andre or anyone from the people here? Yes, Rudak. Just, I just want to add on, on this discussion that some some places indeed parking should be free. It's, it's, it's totally natural, but there are some contentious places where, where we can understand paying it. One thing which I would not support is that we have to put the, the places where young people need to go for activities like, like uh, 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 parks, uh, sports parks and, and, and stadiums and so on, that if we start charging them or their parents for bringing people to activities, that's not a very good idea. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, so I saw Rude Rock, she had her hand up. Go yep. ahead. Um, uh, what are... So we should not con cut down more trees in Espo. Uh, so what is agree, yes and what is no? <laughs> if you agree that you should not cut, if you agree that you should not cut down, you put a thumbs up. If you think that we should cut down trees, for instance, I guess for new buildings, new homes, you put a thumbs down. Could you again explain how, what, what is up and what is down? So up is not to cut trees. Up is save the nature, right, Rudrakshi? Uh, so this is save the nature, don't cut trees. And down is um, go ahead and cut trees, maybe if you really need to, I guess. There's not just for fun, but OK. And uh, Arvin, did you also have a? Uh, up or down for this? Well, for this question, I'd rather to give some uh, examples instead of just yes and no, because I don't think yes and no will really work on such matters. So if you like, I can explain. Go ahead. Sure. Such matters are very important to be discussed on more details. For example, if we are going to cut the trees and build some new houses to be given to some harmful immigrations who are not respecting Finnish law and commit crimes and even rent those houses to the others, definitely I would say it's not wise to cut the trees for that. But if you think you need to cut the trees to localize some of Finnish products, then we can get rid of some parts of uh, uh, pollutions which are made through transporting foreign products to Finland. I would say yes, that's a very environmental friendly way. So it needs explanation in this matter. Thank you. Not a black and white for or against. And, uh, and also, Yuka has just added here that the point is to have more room for homes. Do you want to elaborate, Yuka? Uh, yeah, I think that the right is that, that Espo is still a bit growing. And, and, uh, and we need to also think about next generations, that they might really want to have homes also here at home uh, uh, town and home city. So there is uh, un unavoidable city planning going on in Espo and it has been going for many, many years. And there are also some economic uh, forests in, in the northern Espo, which is owned by private uh, private owners. And, and, and if we want to 
to really uh, pro prohibit them to cut their trees, then we have to exactly purchase them. That means that then we have to take it and then compensate uh, their livelihoods. So, so that's also one issue. Yeah, these obligatory purchases that uh, the city council can decide. The city can always have a, an, a program for acquiring more land to the protection if the if, uh, city wants to have it. Okay, and now the student from EIS has had their hand up for a while, the cat uh, symbol one. You don't need to, but you might want to unmute and ask uh, your question. Um, well, I can't say this is really a yes or no question, but uh, I would like to know what you think about uh, the um, like no hunger or food because it seems like no one really prioritized that. So I would like to know your opinions on that matter. So, uh, Oscar, you have you have maybe an answer to this. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm sure it must have been a bit confusing. No one was, no one was talking about it in the start. But um, basically, um, in Finland, uh, things are very good at the moment. We have um, some years we've had zero absolute poverty, um, which is definitely um, it's on the top of the world. So we have the least poverty in the world. Um, so at the moment, um, the Greens believe that um, hunger and, and um, poverty is still a problem in Finland, but sort of absolute poverty where um, there there's no money for food or just general things you need for living and everything there's there's not a great problem so that's for example why i had it quite low down but i'm sure uh, the other candidates want to answer as well so i'll give them the yeah floor. the hands are popping up uh, katarina and then linda yeah i think that's an excellent question and i think there is the absolute poverty or hunger is not existing in finland what we see maybe in in some Asian countries or, or, or African countries or whatsoever. But definitely, I have a very interesting story about my best friend who is a flight attendant at Finnair. And you know what happened to, to you know, Finnair, no one is flying because of COVID. And sh her situation was for last year that she needed to really think what she's buying at store and is not able even to buy food at some point. So. I think that is there, and I think there are very interesting solutions. You you, you see those ruaka haviki, what is it in English? Food waste. Thank you. <laughs> that kind of cool apps that we can help each other. And, and there, I know there are Facebook groups that if someone is making a lot of food and there is just a plenty to share, why not? This is maybe my elaboration on it. And Linda, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, I, I, I agree with the two previous ones. Like uh, Finland doesn't suffer from lack of food. Uh, if there is a problem here, it's uh, how it's distributed. So yes, I agree that there are people who uh, are suffering from uh, problems with obtaining healthy and enough of food because, because of financial issues. We do have programs to help this. Uh, not, not always efficient ones, and this uh, phenomenon of leipäjonet bread queue uh, is is something that we have seen is increasing. People are waiting for for getting free food because they can't buy it. Uh, I still put it low because this is not this is not like a huge uh, all of Espo issue. It's it's about uh, it's about those who fall between the cracks of societal support systems. Uh, and we we need to mitigate it on the equality side and uh, yeah with, with other things like we don't need to bring more food into Finland we have food. Okay, thanks. Um, we now have a really interesting question from Andre Helgestad, who is a student at Aalto, and uh, maybe just unmute and ask ask yourself. It's an interesting one. Thank you, Anna. Um, yeah, as a, as a non-Finn, a Norwegian, um, I'm not so familiar with Finnish politics, but I am eligible to vote. And um, 
Uh, if I could just ask the candidates to maybe name a politician from an English-speaking country that they look up to or that they feel the most similar to so that it would be easier to kind of identify which kind of values you, um, you're more connected to. So find the mental repository, please. <laughs> yeah, um, you can, um, let's, let, so uh, I guess think of a name. I guess what you're after is uh, these people we can all relate to, like Boris Johnson or Donald Trump, that we can recognize, um, Hillary Clinton, whatever, and just uh, go for it. So, Iqbal, you can start. Uh, for me, it would be Barack Obama. And you can say a few words why. Well, uh, I kind of like his policy and uh, his humor. Um, he, he's, uh, he was doing his work great. At the same time... Uh, uh, he he was trying to do the stuff and um, he, he was relaxed. So I kind of find him interesting and I kind of like his policy. What about you, Oscar? Yeah, I was going to say uh, Bernie Sanders from, from, of course, from the Democratic Party of the United States. So uh, some reasoning why I think um, my honest opinion is that Bernie Sanders is one of the last um, U.S. politicians that are alongside other politicians that is actively looking for the best benefit of the people um, through welfare programs and um, so Medicaid and so on. But he's also a great believer on the, of the whole um, climate change and mitigating climate change. Um, and uh, or just in general, I've, I've been really happy to see more climate action from this administration from the, them from the previous. But that's a discussion from another. From another day and power pass it on. Okay. And what about you, Linda? Yes, uh, this is a really hard question because I generally don't look so carefully who is who outside of Finland in politicians. Uh, but one name that, that I, I think is a nice example is this Alexandria ocasio Cortez from the United States. Uh, she's uh, young, uh, brave to voice opinions that differ from the general ones. So for example, uh, on social support systems, um, and she's, I think, a great role model for for people in in her environment to to think outside of of the boxes of what is like how society should be built in the United States. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. It's interesting that the obviously in, there's not so many English speaking countries, but we are all thinking of Americans. Uh, what about you, Katarina? I agree with Iqbal, and I think Barack Obama is a very good example of being a great leader. A great politician needs to be a good leader that people follow, and you're able to get the trust of your uh, voters and who are supporting you. And I think he was, he still is a very unique, or has a very unique talent to convey a message of, of people and bring that into really something tangible actions. Okay, thanks. And Yuka, what do you say? You might not remember, but the shining star of the whole century is Nelson Mandela. I mean, if you don't remember what happened, that after 26 years of prison, uh, he came to political power with no revenge, no retribution, but mercy and forgiveness to those who oppressed him uh, on, on lifetime. I mean, that's an example which is, can't be overcome. Thank you. South Africa context, apartheid. Thanks for raising that one. And Arvin, what do you think? Sure. The uh, former US president, Mr. Donald Trump, who was not only caring for his own country, but also could uh, bring peace to Middle East and with the right sanctions against those Islamic regimes, such as Islamic Republic in Iran, he could control peace in the world also. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Andre, once more for such an interesting question. Uh, we have actually a question. We have a lot. Uh, we have one from Ada. Ada, go ahead. Uh, you can unmute yourself. You've had your hand up for a while. So this is a yes or or the thumbs up or thumbs down question. Um, but bus rides should be free. 
bus rides should be free. So we have already Katarina in favor, Iqbal in favor, Linda in favor, lots of public transport enthusiasm, and Yuka in favor. And um, I wonder if I can see uh, Oscar and Arvin, what do you think? Actually, you may unmute yourself and also speak if you wish. Um, thank you. Uh, I saw a lot of people's faces go, oh my God, um, when the, the candidate from the Green Party said that he is against um, free public transportation. Um, and this is a sort of a complex question um, in many ways, but the Green Party have long uh, strived for quality public transportation um, that is accessible to as many people as possible. And we believe that that isn't possible without the funding provided from, from um, um, sort of travel tickets. Um, so even though we believe that in a lot of cities, the price is way too high for, for public transport and it's, it's in the central position to reduce ticket prices. Uh, so everyone, it's, it's a more accessible and even a better option than, than driving um, for everyone all around Finland. Um, but we believe that to continue developing uh, public transport um, all around the, the Helsinki region, we believe that we will be in Needing the the um, travel ticket funds funding uh, in instead of just the, the sort of city funding. Thank you, Jukka. Go. You have a point. Yeah, I was first thinking about that. Yeah, let's let's have it free for the families with the children and the the, the older people and the, the students and and underage and so on. But then I was thinking about that, who else is actually using public transportation but these, these uh, segments of the population. So in, in that sense, it's almost the same that if we free part of the, the people on the, on the ticket cost, then maybe we, we should actually go all the way. Um, uh, and then it means, of course, that it, it shows in our taxation rate. Uh, so everybody pays for it. But uh, yeah, that came. For me. And the same is reflected by students from EIS and ISLA who agree that if it was free, people might use it more, but at the same time, they think that it might be less easy to fund public transport. So it's really good to have this awareness of scarce resources and, and uh, at the same time, the right uh, ideals or objectives. Um, we have a question from YouTube at this stage. Uh, that is like a simple yes or no question as well. And it's on um, it's on the sound pollution, sound noise. So the statement is the following. We should have stronger enforcement of outdoor noise regulations. For example, sound cameras, more strict fining, especially in high density residential areas. So do you think there should be more attention given to the sound and noise we're exposed to in ESPO? So we have Katarina with an agreement, yes. Uh, Linda and Arvin uh, think rather no. Linda, uh, go ahead. Uh, this is a little bit tricky because I get the impression that it's a like real-time monitoring and finding people when they drive by in a noisy car. Uh, and I think that would be very complicated and expensive to actually make real. I, I think it's really important for us to try to bring down noise levels in those places where it's high. Uh, we can't do that most efficiently by promoting people to take the bus and don't have their own car. If the total traffic is lower, then the total noise is lower. Um, and for building sites, for example, this is more easy to monitor, then you can you can do those checks. But like continuous monitoring the way you have speed cameras, I don't think it would work. So that's why I say no. Okay, thank you. Um, we also had some uh, points in favor. Um, Katarina, maybe you want to say why you would be in favor? Yeah, I think I don't think it it might be yes. Of course, everything costs something, but still, that's uh, I think sound is very uh, becoming more and more important issue for our how we function and how we are all the time under the influence of 
sound and noises and our telephone and everything. So I think uh, there are different ways how we can limit it uh, and incentivize people to really lower the noises. And I think uh, in Tapiola, where I live, uh, I was trying to have a meeting and all the time something is making super loud noise outside. So I think it's a very good question and I think we should do that. And Oscar, you have your hand up and you've got on this, on this point. Yeah, well, I'm actually not familiar with the concept of noise cameras, but um, as Katarina said, noise pollution is a massive problem, and not only for people, also local wildlife. That it, it's definitely uh, disrupting uh, mating patterns of, for example, birds and and different kind of wildlife. Um, and there's different different ways that that um, we can handle this, and, and we have handled this in the past. Uh, one of the ways is is restricting uh, the speed limit, um, and I think this is also a way that could tie in here. So, for example. Um, on Lantivala, the biggest road going from Espot to Helsinki, it's only 80, um, partially because um, when when people drive faster, it's much more, it's much louder. Um, but anyway, there's also also other ways that make sure we have um, proper noise barriers in between in habitation and and um, roads. But it was a really good question, uh, and and noise pollution is a big problem. And and you come. Yeah, indeed. I, I was actually the first uh, environment uh, inspector of the city of Espoo in in early 80s, and uh, and I, I just find it practically impossible to to go on on with uh, uh, this kind of method. But but I do agree, noise is a problem, and and uh, rightly, it's city planning issue. It's a city planning issue, and planning of transportation roads and, and very well taken by previous speaker that it is a traffic noise which is the most uh, bothering us in, in Espo. And, and maybe uh, we should look at the silent areas whether we can provide people a nearby nature area which is also silent as much as possible. And that means a, a strict and, and good intelligent planning. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, and it was also said by a student from EIS, kind of the same, that it's very hard to implement um, in the chat. Uh, Mohamed, you, it's, uh, you, your hand is up. Um, what would you like to ask? I just wanted to know, this is a yes or no question. Uh, would you try to like um, achieve development in ESPO, even if this hurt, uh, meant hurting nature? So would you try to, would you want to explain, Mohammed? do you mean development of housing and um, places to live or shopping malls like this? Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. So it's kind of the question of can we, can we uh, give up nature in, uh, in, versus... Um, yeah, the buildings and harming the environment in that way. So we have a lot of no's immediately. Iqbal, no. Katarina, no. Oscar, no. Linda, no. Uh, Arvin, um, Jukka, Oscar, or, or, or Oscar, you already had it and it disappeared. But yeah, Arvin, uh, Jukka, what do you think? Well, my answer would be similar to the cutting the trees in the previous questions. So. The same, same, more nuance. Uh, um, yeah. uh, sorry, Jukka first and then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I spent six years in the city planning uh, board uh, uh, yeah. and uh, it's very difficult question, very good question, but uh, indeed everywhere where we are planning more settlements, uh, human houses and, and uh, human centers, we have to look at that. What is the nature um, uh, values there and, and we have to save uh, we have to always preserve a, a part of whatever we are doing for the nature uh, but it is a it is a compromise between human beings need, needs and, uh, and the nature we can't put absolute uh, restrictions on either thanks Linda yes so this is like the fact is that uh, a human being alive will have an impact on nature uh, you need to live somewhere, 
And ESCO is growing. Currently, people are moving in here. It's part of this global mega trend that people are moving into cities more and more. This means that there's more nature elsewhere and less wild nature in ESCO. Um, harming nature is a, a very complex uh, way of, of, of wording it. Uh, I still think it's really important when we plan these new houses that we make it so that the, the harm to the environment around is, is as small as possible. Uh, for example, uh, this water that rains on the road and has asphalt dust and, and oil on it, we need to make sure it doesn't go out to nature. It needs to be purified. Uh, if you don't do that, that is harming nature unnecessarily. So, so things like this, like how we treat rainwater, how much asphalt we have, traffic routes, all of this needs to be uh, uh, thought about in city planning in a way that total environment uh, has as small burden as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Gia, Gia, it's your turn. Um, my question is that, um, should Espo City promote to have more electric cars? Very interesting. Katarina, yes. Oscar, yes. Jukka, yes. Iqbal, yes. Linda, yes. Quite unanimous in that case. And even Rudy has a... You can, of course, vote yourself also in the audience. Um, okay, thank you. Shall we jump to Suhana? Yes. Hi. Um, so my question is that um, how um, everyone feels about climate change and how we can like help get the world better and like like just starting with ESPO, how we can like promote to a better generation. Yeah. So some examples what could be done in ESPO to do this. Who would like to start? Uyuka. Yeah, as a professional, um, what is a good news is that ESPO is going fossil free very soon. Within the years, we give up the, the using the coal and very soon uh, uh, also uh, our, our fleet of uh, transportation is going to be electrified. So it, within the 10 years, you will see it definitely happening that we, within 10 years, we are totally different community with the uh, with uh, uh, climate, uh, uh, climate emissions in, in Finland. It goes very fast now. People are indeed changing their habits and they are changing their modes of transportation. And it goes to elect electricity, which is going to be uh, clean ele electricity. So good news for you. And Linda, some examples. What are you thinking? Yeah, I agree with the uh, clean energy. For example, the new Okiluoto power plant is starting soon. It's a great news. Um, and I also, I also think, though, that uh, one important thing that we can do in ESPO is this consumption, because uh, we know that people who live in the city, they buy much more products that are not... Oops. Uh, people who live in the city have a higher environmental impact by buying more products that they don't need. Uh, for example, fast fashion and all kinds of, like, tinker tanker decorations for Christmas and so on. Um, we need to to promote education and also the city planning that I brought up earlier to uh, sort of guide people, uh, give them the opportunity and give them the knowledge to make more sustainable choices in daily life. And Katarina? Yeah, very good question, Savannah. I think there are two things. Firstly, it starts from individuals. So me and you and everyone else here, we need to make more sustainable options when we buy or consume. And then when it comes to buying, if you have seen, it's quite expensive to buy organic food or sustainable fashion. So we need to find solutions that are actually bringing those prices down. So it's bigger incentive to buy them. Thank you. And Jukka has added that ESPO should promote wind energy on coastal areas as well. And um, Iqbal also has his hand up. Hi. So um, I, I, I kind of agree, completely agree with the previous speakers. Uh, of course, the clean energy thing and the personal consumptions, we can educate our young people and uh, make them conscious that uh, to make uh, uh, sustainable um, decisions while, while 
who, who are the consumption or what they are consuming and then uh, from the broader aspect of view uh, again uh, there are lots of interesting questions in the beginning i think um, what i supported like uh, um, like we we should take care of the nature more electric cars is the one thing i am really one of the support of this uh, so this kind of thing thanks thanks uh, we have now into a slightly different topic. Rudy, do you want to unmute and ask your question? Hello. Uh, yes. How will you help and encourage you start? How will you help and encourage new startups? Katarina. Finally, a question that even concerns me <laughs> more. Uh, so yeah, I'm a startup entrepreneur myself, and I think three things, if you wanna be a startup entrepreneur, it's one, you need money for it, two, you need idea what you're doing, and then three, you need uh, hands to do it and information. I think that's something the cities are super able to do, and it's very easy to implement different kind of projects that are actually improving the situation. And then I only wish when I was in my secondary school and, and high school that there would have been more possibilities to engage more into hackathons, incubators, or even have a course about entrepreneurship or startups. That would have been like very good starting point. But at that point at Ethis, we didn't quite have those. <laughs> so I think these are very good things to start with. Okay, thanks. Arvin, uh, how about you? Well, first, thanks for this interesting question, which I really liked it. And it goes with the same uh, goals that I was uh, arranging in the SDGs, that localization would help a lot in this uh, matters for making new jobs, new entrepreneurs, and to uh, not only supporting Finnish industries locally, but on, also we can go very much uh, envir in an environmental friendly manner. It's uh, maybe interesting for you that in Finland, there are many farms, agricultural farms, that they are Luomo, like organic, and they are producing quite so many of agricultural products which are made by Finland, which can help or help to be used, which can bring more job opportunity and open a um, condition for new entrepreneurs. So localization would be a good decision for this. Thank you. Thanks. And Oscar? Yeah, there's been lots of good points already. Um, one central role that the um, city has in these kind of matters is, for example, when, when city buys things, like when city uses services uh, or, for example, an example, you know, buys food for to get you guys EIS food, school food. So, for example, this kind of stuff is, is the ways that the city can help sort of small business and and um, promote entrepreneurship. And then also the point that... that Katarina made about entrepreneurship education is really important. Um, and uh, you'd be happy to hear that we actually have an entrepreneurial course at this at the moment. So uh, I think we are going in a better direction. So, yeah. Cool. Great to have this uh, insight. Uh, Linda, very quickly before we go to Isla's question. Uh, thank you. Yes, I think we need to uh, make it uh, less risky to be uh, a small business owner. Uh, for example, stuff like if you become sick or if you have just two employees and one of them becomes sick or goes on mother's leave, that's a big financial risk for a small entrepreneur right now. Uh, we need to make better deals for, for ensuring that it's, uh, yeah, it, it's easier to meet these challenges if you have a small business. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Isla, go ahead. You had a question. Uh, yes. Uh, hello. Um, so my question is that electricity from renewable sources is more expensive than electricity from coal or fossil fuels. How would you encourage more people to be climate conscious if you were elected? 
Very, very good question. Thank you. Jukka. Uh, it's a bit misunderstanding that the renewables are more expensive than, than the coal or, or oil, the fossil-based uh, energy at this moment. That's why I said that it's a great opportunity because the wind energy in Finland is at the moment as economic or more economic than, than going into the coal. It's just that, that we need the places where to put it. And uh, now we have it all in the west coast of Finland and in the northern Finland. We have to open even in Espo, some areas for wind energy, which is profitable at the moment, doesn't need even, even support from the uh, public. The same is going to be happening for uh, solar energy. And so there will be a big transformation very soon. And what you can do or any Espo citizen can do is that first support already now, when you are buying, when you are making electricity agreements with the family or with the company, that, that uh, opt for uh, clean energy and electricity because that's available and, and the cost is about the same. So it is only the choice of making right, right decisions at the moment. And the city itself, of course, can do that public procurement of Espo city will be definitely should be carbon neutral or even carbon negative at this moment. And, and that we can do with the, with the procurement rules of, of yeah. Espo city. Mm. Procurement meaning that when the city buys something, when, for example, some of the city services, like the library, wants to buy something, it can be carbon neutral. And uh, Linda. Thank you. Uh, I strongly support the nuclear energy, especially this uh, future generation of uh, small modular reactors, which are going to be much cheaper than the previous mega reactors. Uh, because one of the troubles with the wind and solar, for example, is that they are not constant and they take up a lot of space. Uh, that is why this burning coal uh, has been so efficient and so cheap because it is reliable and you can control how much you need. You can give that out immediately, but you can't control the wind or the sunlight and just order more wind or sun when you need a lot of energy. Uh, so I strongly go for nuclear, it is very, very low emissions, it is very dense energy, and it is very reliable. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, did Oscar still want to comment on this one? Uh, no, we can go forward. Okay. Yeah, we have so much, uh, so many questions. I wanted to also say a shout out to everyone watching on YouTube. We have uh, over 36 participants. Uh, even even now at the very end. Uh, let's now go to Rud Rakshi quickly, your question. Uh, I actually got two questions along the way, but um, my first question is, uh, what are your views on the current uh, sustainable development in ESPO and how are you going to improve? Uh, how do you think we can improve it? So let's go kind of one example, concrete action that you would vote for in the city council for the sustainable development. Maybe it's, maybe it's something that electrical car gets implemented. Maybe it's, it's the procurement rules. Um, who would like to start? Katarina? Yeah, I think the procurement, so when the city buys something, we start from there. So everything what we buy, we try to be uh, taking into consideration the sustainability and everything. That's the starting point, definitely. Thanks. Linda? Uh, I want to make sure that school food is bought by ingredients that are sustainably produced. No meat from the other side of the world. I want locally and close by produced stuff that has a low environmental impact. Thank you. Good. Also very concrete example. Uh, Jukka, do you have something in mind? No, I would add, I mean, very good uh, proposals already, but I would add that the Espo should be the, 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 the winner of the circular economy city. That means that put all in, in circular economy uh, and, and promote that very strongly. And uh, Iqbal? Can you unmute? Sorry, <laughs> I just forgot about it. So yeah, um, I think yeah, uh, 
like one of the thing is that we 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 can make our public transport uh, portation more electric. Okay, Arvin. Oh, promoting uh, purchase and use of Finnish product, local product in uh, public centers. In procurement, yeah. And Oscar. Uh, maybe reducing the amount of um, meat and dairy products used in the city food services. Okay, thanks. Now, uh, Ada, you had a question. So I have uh, another yes or no question. And um, it is, <clears throat> should Espo City get more electric bikes and scooters? Linda says yes, Katarina and Oscar say yes. Jukka also thinks yes. Iqbal uh, doesn't think we should be buying, Espo should be buying more scooters, electric scooters. And Arvin also says yes, they should be. Um, Iqbal, Arvin, uh, maybe Iqbal first, then Arvin. Well, I'm not sure if I got her questions quite right, because if, you're, if, she, if she's talking about bike, then... Um... Um, if it's bicycle, I say I would say no because um, it is kind of exercises for us with the bicycle, and of course I'm in favor of uh, clean energy and then electric. But uh, scooters, uh, yeah, probably for the scooters uh, we should buy more electric scooters. Okay, and Arvin, you agree with this? Mm, I don't have a comment on it, but I agree with it. It's useful. Okay, Jukka, Jukka here is, uh, can yeah. I talk? Of course. Okay, uh, uh, um, I just bought, a, oh, I have been buying the electricity bike. Uh, it's about 800, uh, the cheap electricity bikes, 800 euros compared to maybe 400 euros of a, a normal bike. So there is a price difference. Now, the rich people or well, well off people don't need that support. I mean, the question is that do we support somebody's uh, procurement of electricity bikes instead of normal ones in order that we will en enhance their transportation even even uh, moving out from the cars uh, it's a bit question of social equity here um, uh, the same with the with the scooters uh, that that uh, but what can be of course uh, of course uh, pro promoted is is that that uh, there is an, an, an supply of, of these and, and, and possibility to use them so it's a bit complicated issue. Yeah, and Linda? Uh, thank you. Yeah, I am strongly for more city bikes, more city scooters, more small transportation for uh, single persons, because that will reduce overall traffic and less use of car. Um, and one thing, actually, I know a person, an older person with an electric bike, who says that this is a really big difference for him. If it was a normal bike, he would not be out biking. Uh, but because it is electric, it helps him in the uphill, uh, and then he can pedal and get more exercise on the flat land. So uh, electric bikes do promote more exercise. Thank you. Thank you. I earlier had Huda had their hand up. Huda, did you want to ask the question still? Uh, no, it was just um, that... Uh, um, uh, I kind of forgot, so... Okay, no worries. Um, then, well, then we have um, uh, Rudy, who I think has written it in chat, but you can uh, unmute, please, and go ahead. Uh, do you believe we need to make the whole of a solar panel? If we do, how urgently? So do you believe we need to make the whole ESPO solar paneled? And if we do, how urgently? Rudy, maybe you can explain whether you mean that if every house should have solar panels or centrally at ESPO, there should be massive solar panel fields or either or. I mean that uh, all energy should be like solar panels or... Yeah. Okay. So uh, Linda says no. 
Yuka is waving that it's very complex, probably from his ex extensive experience. Um, Iqbal has their hand up. Iqbal, do you want to start? Well, uh, I don't think so that we need to uh, like do the solar panel thing immediately. We should be in favor of clean energy and probably we should start to implement it so that we have alternate clean energy, but uh, we don't really have to rush to the solar panel uh, thing. Linda. Yes, I, I think it would be great to make it easier to install your own solar panels on your house. And for like private use, it is nice uh, energy solution. But uh, for the industrial needs, we simply cannot make enough solar panels to cover those needs of electricity. So uh, that is why we also need other types of energy. Okay, thanks. And Oscar? Yeah, well, I also agree that definitely it has to be um, easy and accessible, to, for example, domestic households to use uh, solar panels for their own energy. Um, at this point, I'm going to have to, um, I'm very busy today and I've, I've actually got another panel discussion right after this. So uh, I'm going to have to leave, but I just want to say thank you, a big thank you to everyone. And um, it's really, uh, for really sort of smart questions. That was actually really, really sort of uh, happy. Everyone had really good questions. But anyway, I'm going to thank you, thank you everyone. And um, um, and those of you who can vote, vote remember to vote. And um, yeah. Thanks for joining, Oscar. To you. Yeah. And also, want, yeah. Yeah. I want to add on, on this solar panel. Um, indeed, it's going to happen. After the wind, the next uh, new renewable is, is solar panel, and they will come to the parity. That means that their price is, is lumeting down in such a way that, that it is affordable. Now, what ESPO can do is that we provide for systemic change in the, in the system that housing companies can in, indeed by the solar panels on their roofs. We have huge amount of uh, uh, whole row houses and housing companies with a lot of roofing. Uh, and they, can, they have to be able to connect to the grid. That means that the grid company has to accept that there will be a dis, uh, distributed energy production in Espo, and that we, as a consumers, will, will change into the producers. Um, and then be more active and, and equal with the, the big electricity companies on this one. So it needs a systemic change, and, and I hope that it will come. Okay, thank you. Uh, we had a Huda. Huda, did you remember now your question? You have your hand. Uh, yeah, I do remember. But my question was that: Do you think that like uh, we should do more UNICEF walks and like fundraiser days? So yeah, indeed, from the more social responsibility or charity side, who thinks yes? Who thinks no? More cha more chances to give, to donate. Yes, um, Yuka, what do you think? You had you wanted to comment? Yeah, maybe this brings me also this is going to be finished very soon. To the one issue is that that Espo, we are the lucky ones in the world. We Espo citizens, and and then we in Finland are the lucky nation. And yes, indeed, not all the people can come here, and therefore there is a policies. But those who are coming and those who are left outside, we have to feel for them. And we have to feel for them. And that means that there is a everybody's a responsibility to help the poor and those who are deprived from uh, our standard of living. And whether it's UNICEF or UN system as such, whether it is that, that there are people which have no papers here in Finland and are, are in the very bad situation, Every, we have to help. Uh, so uh, totally fully committed and, and supportive. Thank you. Uh, and Katarina? Yeah, I think you're asking, should we help others? Of course we need to help others and not only internationally, but I think locally. I think we need to take better care of our elderly, our children, uh, each other in ESPO generally. So of course these are very fun activities and I think this kind of uh, culture should be more improved or improve generally. And Arvind? 
Thank you. Well, I want to remind that we have at the moment 400 Finnish people in Espo who are homeless. And think about it, 400 people. And it's very important that we care about others. Definitely, we are all humans. But let's remember, with only feeding the hunger people, we cannot solve the problem. It needs very logical and very working plan. And we should also remember in many of those countries who are struggling for either hunger and lack of human rights and so on, the problem arises from social culture. The culture is problematic in there. And we cannot with a single easy way change the culture, but from the free world, we can force those corrupted authorities to align them with a better uh, human rights or even environmental uh, policies. Thank you. Thank you. And Linda, any comment there? Uh, thanks. Uh, I think it would be great to have more of these awareness days uh, because the fact is that the global trade uh, settings of the world, they are not fair. And some sit some countries are continuously losing money on just because they can't sell their their food or their the clothes to a reasonable price. Uh, I think we need more awareness of this and and UNICEF days and also other kinds of events. Maybe not only walk for money, maybe more diversity in this type of program. I think that would be a great development uh, to make people more aware and, and build more new ideas for how the work should work. Okay, now just final question from Gia. Gia has had her hand up, go ahead. Um, uh, hi again, um, my question is that I could see lots of masks lying around and it's one of the main pollutants in the recent days. Uh, what are your steps, what are the steps you would take? So one concrete step that maybe from the city side you can organize in the waste collection. Uh, Linda? Uh, yeah, tell people to keep track of their masks. And also, fact is you can reuse these single-use masks if you heat them. So people don't know this, but you can do it. And I think we should tell people about that option. Right. Iqbal? Oh make more awareness be, uh, in the people that it is actually polluting our city. Okay, thank you. And on that note, we're gonna close the panel. Thank you so much everyone for joining um, and for the super interesting conversation. It was really vibrant. I want to really thank uh, the, the candidates, the brave candidates who are gonna represent the city, uh, hopefully after the elections. Uh, so Oscar, Arvin, Katarina, Jukka, uh, Iqbal, thanks so much, um, and Linda for, for joining us. It was really, really nice. And thank you so much to the students, both of Aalto and of the International School, because you were guys, you were, you were amazing. It was really interesting to hear your questions and what is occupying your mind. And I'm super inspired by you. Thank you so much to everyone. And um, thanks for spending the rainy afternoon together. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you very, very much. much. And I'm sorry you couldn't all ask your questions. I hope that our voters can contact you directly probably and um, ask any questions they might still have. Thank you so much. And thank you to the organizers, AYY. Nice. Have, a Have a nice evening, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. bye. 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 bye.